What's up my friends, welcome back, you're watching Harv Video Order Stuff, and for you today, I've got my opinion of Sigma's 35mm f1.4 art for video use. As always, this is not a sponsored video, and I bought this lens with my own cash, so strap in for a no-holds-barred review from a videographer's perspective. Roll that intro. <laughs> As ever, links to everything mentioned in this video are in the description box below, and be sure to show some love to the channel, definitely get subscribed and hit the notification bell, that really means the world to me. Thank you kindly. So what is this lens? Well Sigma's 35mm f1.4 art on paper looks like a fairly ordinary, albeit good quality lens that's now been superseded by its substantially meatier f1.2 big sister. It's also not a new lens, there are plenty of reviews out there, but I definitely think you'll find this one valuable, especially coming from a videographer's perspective. It has a 63.4 degree field of view, which many people still describe it as a wide angle lens. I, I don't see it personally. For me, from anywhere around 30 to about 60 millimeters full frame, I would call a standard focal range, where you don't have to worry about things like distortion, and it's not compressing the image too much. So what are its features? Well, obviously the headline feature for this lens is its wide f1.4 maximum aperture, and it has nine rounded aperture blades, so the outer focus areas you'll find will look lovely. It has 13 elements in 11 groups with lots of fluorite style low dispersion and special low dispersion elements to minimize chromatic aberration and maximize contrast. It has a filter thread of 67 millimeters, which is smaller than I thought for a f1.4 lens, and it has a minimum focusing distance of 30 centimeters. It also has a solid brass mount, but like the bulk of Sigma's art range, it doesn't have the rubber sealing gasket, so it's not a weather sealed lens. It also has no optical stabilization. So what's the build quality like? Uh, really good. In short, like all of the Sigma art range, it is a relatively small lens for an f1.4 lens, but it is reassuringly solid feeling and heavy at around 700 grams, depending on the mount that you choose. The large focus ring is very smooth and buttery and, and very quiet, you can hear if I put it near the microphone. And of course, like the rest of the art range, it has this lovely, albeit easily scratched matte finish. I like it, personally. But luckily, with the Sigma art range regarding the finish, once you own one, you don't ever really want to sell it, and if you own one, you know what I'm talking about. But how does it compare with another popular 35mm lens, the Canon 35mm f2 IS? So first of all, this is the Sigma 35 at f1.4, and of course the outer focus areas look beautiful, and when we zoom in we can see the sharpness is very good. But I wonder how this compares to the Canon 35mm f2 IS. So let's stop the Sigma down to f2, and then compare side by side to the Canon. And here they are, and there's a couple of things I noticed straight away, and the most obvious is that the Canon looks slightly wider in terms of field of view. Why this is, I have no idea. And then I noticed that the light transmission is slightly better on the Sigma, particularly at the edges, and this is probably because the Canon is wide open, whereas the Sigma is stopped down slightly. And this is very well illustrated when we look at a waveform. This line is the Sigma, and this one is the Canon. Also, to my eye, the Canon looks slightly warmer compared to the Sigma. When we zoom in, I can't really notice any difference in terms of sharpness. Really, you'd need to be taking a photo and then pixel peeping, which is not the point of this video. However, I did notice that the outer focus areas on the Sigma are significantly smoother. Could this be a 9 aperture blade versus 8 aperture blade thing? Seems unlikely. So what about focus breathing? If you're unfamiliar with the term focus breathing, this is actually where your field of view can change depending on where your focus point is. As you can see here, I'm stopped down and I'm moving from closest focus all the way to infinity, and our field of view is changing. I just want to preface this by saying that focus breathing is much less noticeable when you have such a wide maximum aperture, but the Sigma really is not that great when it comes to focus breathing. Here's the Canon with its ever so slightly wider field of view, and from the looks of things I would say this is equally bad. Focus breathing is just not a priority for lens manufacturers when they make photography lenses, and one of the things that you pay for when you buy cinema lenses. Here's a surprise, I was curious about this so I chucked on my Canon 16-35 f4 IS at 35mm, same aperture, and actually I would say the breathing is much better on this lens, which is a surprise because it has a lot more to do with it being a zoom lens. 
So how good does that out of focus area actually look? AKA how good do the bokeh balls look? This is something that I care about. I like the bokeh balls to look really nice and I prefer them to have that sort of solid color defined edge look rather than the sort of onion looking type. And I can report that's what you get with this lens. They're lovely and rounded in the center and then you get the more American football slash rugby ball shaped ones near the edges. I'm also very happy with the performance once you stop the lens down a little bit. The bokeh balls and the out of focus areas always look good on this lens. So is the Canon 35mm f2 IS good? Uh, yeah, really good. And the Sigma? Yeah, really good too. To be honest, I switched because the Sigma will autofocus on my a7S III, the Canon won't. But now let me show you what the Sigma can actually do in the real world. So I think the Sigma represents pretty good value for money, all things considered. But what are the alternatives? Well, of course, there's Canon's 35mm f2 IS, which I think is decent value, and it's really small and light, so it's great for gimbal work. And then there's Canon's 35mm f1.4 L, which is super expensive, but super great. Of course, let's not forget Canon's new RF 35mm f1.8 macro, which personally I don't think is great value, but then the RF lenses are quite expensive. Performance wise, we're looking at similar performance to the F2 IS version. Let's not forget Sigma's 35 mm F1.2 art, which is incredible, but fairly expensive. And on the Sony side of things, we've got the FE 35 mm F1.8, which is really compact. I think it's fairly expensive for what it is, but it's a decent performer. And then there's the Sony Zeiss Distagon 35mm f1.4, which is crazy expensive, but lovely. On the value side of things, we've got the Rockinon slash Samyang slash Bauer 35mm, which I previously reviewed. I think it's great value, but watch my review, I found it slightly optically flawed. Nikon, of course, have their 35mm f1.4G, which is brilliant, but again, expensive. On the third party side of things, we've got Tamron's 35mm f1.4, solid performance from this one, and I would say a fair, but not low price. Needless to say, there are so many options on the market. Next, let's move on to the opinion. I have a love-hate relationship with the 35mm focal length. For a walk-around lens getting video at a location, I find it almost uninspiring because it's so natural looking, too real life looking. But as soon as you have a subject, this lens makes so much sense and all of a sudden your footage looks gorgeous. Many people see the 50 millimeter focal length as being the most sort of true to life in terms of compression and that kind of thing. For me, it's the 35. It just looks so real. Everything looks so real when you film with this focal length. But anyway, this lens gives you spectacular image quality for, I think, a very fair price. It's just simply a quality workhorse optic. The other day I was able to use the 35mm for the first time on a project and I had a three camera setup filming a live band. and. It was the first time that I was able to have a three Sigma lens lineup and the footage, there's something about it. The, the footage working together, they all just made sense. Does that make sense? Probably not. So to sum up, personally, I think the whole of the Sigma art range feels special and this 35 is no exception. You just, in my opinion, you just need a subject. It's not a lens that I'd really feel particularly inspired to use. If I was, say, by, uh, by the coast and I was getting some shots there, I might want something a little wider or much longer. Anyway, that's it for now. I hope you found this interesting and helpful. Do ask me questions about this lens in the comment section below. I'm down there as much as I possibly can be. As always, I've got a large back catalogue of videos about videography on this channel, of which YouTube has handpicked this top video for you, and the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. Mm -hmm.